So question number one comes from at underscore KC underscore Brown. I believe it's two underscores after that. If I get it wrong, you might not find them, but hopefully I get it right. And their question is, do you have to live in the dorms at most colleges? If so, which year can you live off campus? This depends on the college entirely, but uh, for my personal situation, Champlain required you to be on campus the first year. Highly recommended, I should say, because you could get around that if you really wanted to. But uh, most freshmen lived on campus, and it is a great opportunity to meet people that you don't know yet. And you get to kind of form that pack initially and then kind of branch out and get to meet everybody. Uh, for when you can move off campus, that's pretty much almost immediately. Uh, you can move in and decide that, hey, this isn't right for me. Uh, even second semester rolls around, and it might not even be moving off in the dorm, but moving into a different dorm. Uh, but then most of the colleges are usually second year. Actually, a lot of them now are kicking you out yeah. of the dorms and saying, hey, you can live here for free. Or not for free, but you have to pay room and board. Yeah. But you live here, it's guaranteed freshman year, and then sophomore year, you're on your own and uh, get moving. So, yeah, I think uh, it is beneficial to live in the dorms the freshman year. As I mentioned, you get to meet everybody. You live with an RA most of the time, I would assume all of the time, but I, I don't know if that's true or not. And your RA will get you into the college life, tell you what's going around campus, what's going on campus. Uh, also, you're going to be not only with kids in your grade, but you'll be with a mix of freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Uh, you could have a super senior living with you, which is always fun because they know the most about campus and where they go. So, yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah, it mostly depends, um, especially um, for moving off campus, it's a very urban versus rural thing and size of the college. So Champlain had um, housing approved for all, and that approved but guaranteed if you got your deposit in they would find you housing for all four years it's not necessarily true if you go to like a school in Boston because there's just nowhere to put people so That's Suffolk true. was on my list and they didn't guarantee housing for any year because they're right downtown so I lived in Boston if I ended up going to Suffolk they probably would have been like mm, you, you live in that park you sure you need to be in the dorm you could just you know take the tea um also, a lot of camp colleges now, um, if they guarantee housing, it's not necessarily in this country. So I got, a, it was also <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah. A lot of places <laughs> would be like, you can go abroad your first semester. And the secret is that they don't have housing for you. And that's why they encourage students uh, to go abroad for the first semester. So I got accepted to Suffolk. It was kind of like, Meh. And not that I didn't like Suffolk, but I was like hemming and hawing my colleges, and they sent me a letter and said, hey, you can go to Madrid for your first semester. And I was like, I don't speak Spanish. And uh, my mom, well, yeah. <laughs> we were talking earlier, the piñata room. The piñata room. I always had candy in my dorm room, so my friends called it la piñata. <laughs> but that's not Spanish. <laughs> Piñatas are Mexican. I don't, I don't speak Spanish <laughs> um, That's fun. not like from Spain, so... Um, yeah, so it was um, it was interesting. So that's that's a choice too. I mean, if that if you're interested in living on campus, but you don't want to do it in this country, find a college that doesn't have room for you. I also looked that's at great. Suffolk, and I had heard that too that yeah. they don't guarantee housing, and I think that was part of the reason I didn't choose them um, to go to school because I definitely wanted to live yeah. on campus freshman year. Um, I also wanted like a campus feel, mm -hmm. and you are right in the middle of Boston. That's yeah. like it's like right next to the Commons. There um, really is no yeah. campus for Suffolk. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just not something either one of us was looking for. Yeah, I think my school guaranteed housing for all four years because not many people, like not a lot of juniors or seniors or even sometimes sophomores, lived on campus, and so many kids commuted because mm -hmm. it's such a big school that they could give housing to upperclassmen too. Um, it wasn't required for freshmen, but I think it was recommended. And most people do stay on campus as a freshman. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend it. They also have like usually games when you're a freshman for the yeah. first like month or two to get to know people in your hallway. So if you're competitive like me, yeah. they got so games. The icebreakers. With yeah. like oh, Sundays great. and candy after. It's not bad. <laughs> There's a lot of places recommend it. I, don't, I didn't know that Champlain required it. I thought it was just... I don't know if it was required. I think it was, it was highly very, recommended. Yeah. Like, 
freshmen always got dorms. They have mo- the most dorms are for first years at Champlain. Yep. And most schools are the same way. I think there's one school, I don't remember the name of it, but I was editing one of their articles last year and they required students to live on campus, but like everything was paid for. It was one of those really bougie colleges um, that like you basically guaranteed scholarship if you get in and you're not paying for anything. Um, but you have to be way smart. <laughs> Does Champlain um, allow freshmen to bring their cars on campus? I know some schools don't you, do that. You know, for, yes. Schools it it depended, yeah, what you yeah. mean, but yeah. ours was, I forget what, Gil- Gilbane? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, and they started charging yeah. for that now because they cut it in half. Well, yeah, when I was there, I had a brick thrown through my window in Gilbane. Yeah. There was about 10 cars, and I was in the unlucky row yeah. that had a brick smashed through. Yeah, yeah they fall. just chopped the parking lot in half, and they started charging students. It used to be free to park at Gilbane, which was like a mile from campus, and there was a shuttle that would come around. And now they started charging for it for students because they want to be a residential campus, which um, heads up Champlain. You're in Burlington. There is nothing to do there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under the age of 21, there's nothing to do there. Because mm-hmm. all the venues are 21 plus. That's true. It's great. True. Yeah, and Higher Ground is so hard. Higher Ground, which is their like concert venue, is so far away. It's like a mile away, and I'm like, I'm not paying for a cab. So you have to pay to park now, yeah. and then get. Trans- I don't care. Do you have to pay for transportation. No, they. Um, so if you park down, if it di- it di- differs by school, but at Champlain it was when I was there parking at Lakeside was free, and then they also gave you a free. They called it a Catma card, where you would call a taxi cab, and it would be covered from Lakeside to your dorm. Oh. Um, yeah. I don't think we had that when I was there, but I, we had something if it was, if the shuttle wasn't running. Yeah, that's it. If it's past shuttle hours, you yeah. can use that and it would give you a free cab ride. Yeah. I got out of a parking ticket once by using that. Yeah. Because, yeah, it was at, like, I got home at 9.30 at night, which was past, you could park on campus between, like, 9 and something or other. Um, it was before, like, 8 o'clock, and... I had woken up at like 7.50, ready to go, and my rap, my pet rabbit had thrown litter everywhere, and I had to clean that up, and I ended up getting out there at like 8.05, there was a parking ticket, and I said, this, is, this isn't this is right, because I had to clean this up, I didn't have a, one of those Katma cards, and I'm a girl, I don't want to be <laughs> down in the middle of like, waiting for a bus in the middle of the night in Vermont when there's no one around, especially since like Tyler said, it wasn't the best situation always, yeah. so I went and was like, you need to take away this parking ticket because it's your fault. And they said, yeah, it is. So I don't have to pay the parking ticket. We were like five minutes late, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So, but it's different for every campus. So if you go to a campus where they require freshmen to live on campus, but they allow you to have your car, like there's, it seems like Casey doesn't really want to live on campus. So there's, there are ways to get off uh, campus. Casey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say my, uh, my college or university um, had you had to pay for parking, mm-hmm. um, but it also depended the parking like sticker that you put on your car. Um, the price for it depended on how many credits you were taking. Um, so it's like if you're a commuter taking only a few credits, then you know you paid less. Um, but then also they wouldn't check for parking ticket or parking stickers after a certain time. So mm-hmm. like I don't know, it was like after day classes. And then weekends, you can park wherever you wanted. Um, and then there is a specific parking area in the parking garage that was designated only for commuter students during the week. Um, at night, it was like, you know, you can park wherever. But, yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a pretty good deal, yeah. I would it's say. It's a pretty good system. Yeah, I would say we so. We never had, like, a designated spot for commuters. And so kids would just come in usually late. So they're, like, trying to find the quickest spot possible mm-hmm. and would just park, like... Illegally somewhere, just pay the yeah. ticket or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but they needed... And then the parking lot, my school was on a hill. So the parking lot's at the bottom of the hill. Oh, so you have to walk <laughs> up. So then it's like yes. a mile up to your classes, because all the classes are at the very top of the hill. So if you're running late, and you have to park at the bottom of the hill, and you don't have time to wait for the bus, you're like running up that hill. I was usually sweating when I got to class. It was fun. <laughs> um... There are also different benefits to living on campus versus living off campus. Obviously, in an apartment, you don't have the RA policing you. We don't police. Um, But you 
Get yeah. on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Stop resisting. People were like, we're, you're policing us. And I was like, you're drinking with the door open. And I walked by. That's not police. That's just common sense. <laughs> um, so there's, you know, the, the lack of supervision. Um, in an apartment, um, which is good and bad in its own way. Still don't recommend drinking with the door open no. if you live off campus either, because then you just more trouble. Yeah. I think. Don't leave your door open. It's, uh. it's a dangerous <laughs> world we live in. <laughs> RA <it's> police. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, I had friends. I lived on campus for all four years because I couldn't. I've talked about this before, I couldn't get, like, a part-time job around this area because whenever they would need me most, like, if I worked in retail, they would need me for Black Friday, and I'd be like, well, I'm in Boston for Thanksgiving. Um, so I didn't end up, I, I couldn't get a job in the area, so I couldn't pay rent, and I said, all right, I'm just living on campus all four years. But I had roommates who lived um, in the area and who rented apartments in um, Burlington because they had extra, jo- or extra jobs or their parents were helping them out. Um, and they loved it, and it was South great Burlington. to go hang out with them. Baby. It was so sketchy walking down there and then. <laughs> South Burlington. Uh, I've never been to Burlington. I feel like I should go. I'm just not either. South Burlington. Burlington's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's a great city. Just avoid South Burlington. Yeah. Quite. Another uh, point towards uh, recommending living on campus, especially like the first year, is uh, my school would have their uh, five weeks of welcome. Mm-hmm. And um, so it would be like W-O-W, wow, week. Weeks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so they would have uh, weeks of welcome for like five to six weeks um, to make sure that like students were happy and that they were everything they had was accommodated. Um, and from when I was a freshman to when I graduated, it has become like a much bigger and bigger ordeal um, to the point where like Bed Bath & Beyond was there under like a tent. Ooh. They had um, just like a whole bunch of like big name stores underneath the tent and they're like, if you forgot anything at home, come to this tent and like purchase whatever you forgot. Um, and so it's, it's things like that that I think, like, people don't think about. It's like if you have to commute, then commute, but if you have the opportunity to live on campus, then, like, they roll out the red carpet for freshmen. Even living in an apartment off campus, I feel like you lose out on a lot of opportunities to, like, go do stuff on campus because, I mean, like, even if you live near campus, it's so far. (laughs) Yeah, and so... um, Sorry, on no, 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 I was going to say right the there. same thing. Yeah. Is, yeah, for a lot of the dorms, it's very close to campus. Mm-hmm. And then when you live off campus, depending on where the school is, you might have to take a little hike to get to campus or to take walk, a car ride. You have or to bike, you have yeah. to hike. And uh, it becomes a hassle, especially if, you know, it's nice hanging out with the kids that live on the dorm, even, yeah. you know, as you get up and you decide if you want to move out in this apartment. It's like, ah, I got an hour yeah. in between classes. Do I really want to go back to the apartment yeah. and then turn around and come back? Or do I stay on campus? Do I go to the dorm and hang out? So that's something yeah. to throw in there. I think living on campus freshman year is a great idea because then, especially if you live off campus, commuter students are infamous for having like, no friends on campus because mm-hmm. they're going to and from. And it's like I said, it's more difficult to get to events on campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can talk to people in your class and hang out but they're like oh let's go back to the dorms or let's go into the cafeteria and if you're a commuter student then you don't have a meal plan and mm-hmm. it gets they don't have enough guest passes or whatever so um that also, helps like, you build those sorry. relationships not as like willing to come back to campus because yeah. like if you have class and then go back to your apartment for the day and then let's say like something's happening yeah. that night on campus chances of you going back Unless you're, like, a really motivated person. I wasn't. So I, like, once I was home, I was home. Unless I felt um, better. Yeah. But my, I also lived, like, 20 minutes. Like, I, you or I, kids who live off campus, live mm-hmm. by the beach, which is, like, yeah. 20 minutes from campus. So it's, yeah. like, another you know, 20 minute drive back to campus. Just was what happened when I lived at Spinner. I didn't do anything sophomore year because it was over in Winooski, which was a town over. It's not that far for if you're, like, going for classes, but... I would, like, go and hang out in my friend's dorms if I had to go to an event or a club meeting later at night because then I would have to wait for the shuttle, and it was just awful process. If I didn't have the shuttle, I would have to drive my car over, and I wasn't technically supposed to park anywhere, but I did, so it was, like, chancing a ticket. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's it's maximum effort, and I think, 
mean, I, I met a lot of friends freshman year through living in the dorms of friends that I still have to this day. Um, so it, it, that's what I recommend is, you know, living on campus because there's that t- t- uh, tight-knit community. Um, and it seems like the person asking this question isn't very interested in living on campus, but I think there are a lot of benefits that you're not looking at. Yeah, I would do throw a counterpoint to Mm -hmm. that is when you're off campus and you're walking to campus Mm -hmm. even when I lived at North Place it was three, four blocks three blocks away. Two miles. It was far. (laughs) Uh, You would pass a bunch of different houses on the way uh, in this case fraternities on the way Mm -hmm. and so you actually meet people as you're walking too. Mm -hmm. So not living on campus is a little inconvenient but at the same time you meet people just by walking yeah. by and a lot of times doors are open and like hey what's going on you go yeah. here and some of the times it's no i go to the ubm it's mm-hmm. the street <laughs> oh okay mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so, but i feel like junior senior year too you're kind of at the point where you're ready to move off campus yeah. if you have lived there for yeah. two years yeah so it's like nice to like still be in school but get that independence and i feel like like having a house kind of like taught me a lot of responsibilities paying bills taking care of the house yeah. cooking for myself it's yeah, different I, I was gonna say also uh moving off campus like junior or senior year um it's like you've already established like friendships yeah. that you've created while you were on campus and then you've also possibly like joined organizations on campus and so you're not like trying to create that community it's like you've you've already created it and so now you're more motivated to uh, join in on activities on campus once you yeah. move off campus. Yeah. And again, there are be- there are benefits to living in an apartment. I mean, you don't have quiet hours. Um, you probably have your own room, whereas um, as a yeah. freshman, you probably share a room with someone else, um, which is not the best. But um, so you you probably have your own room. You have your your place to sort of remove yourself. They're probably more lax about being able to put nails in the wall and things like that. Um, probably, I don't know for sure. Uh, but there there are different benefits too. So it's not it's not the worst choice to live on your own, but do also remember rent is a thing. Well, yeah, I was going to bring that point up where depending on where you're living and if you decide to go off campus to get an apartment, and especially if you're sharing it with a larger group of friends, mm-hmm. it can actually be cheaper than yep. going through the college and doing that. And also, you save money on uh, board, so mm-hmm. all the you know the food that you get on campus yeah. is normally you pay one flat fee or whatever you decide to do for your meal plan. Now you have to go shopping every week, yeah. and you have to cook mm-hmm. for yourself, as Mackenzie mentioned. So, depending on what you're buying and what you're cooking, yeah. you could be potentially saving a bundle there too. And uh, in my case, it was with four other people, well, three other people, including myself, so four total. And we just rotated once a week. Yep. It was somebody else's turn to buy groceries, and we all just kind of pitched in to cook and um, college cooking. Go check it out. <laughs> and, uh, little plug. Yeah, it's uh, a <laughs> yeah. It's quality. quality Although cooking. I find I find that tends to be a six of one, half dozen of another because yep. like living off campus can be cheaper with rent, but that's out of pocket costs. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have the money up front for that, you don't have a job, your parents can't help you out with the rent, then you're struggling to pay rent every month, and that. I feel like brings the joy out of college. <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, I we've talked about it before. I've got loans. I'm still paying off my, my living expenses from freshman year, but um, I mean, I it, for me that was it was time for me to save things that I ended up having to stay in off campus off campus housing. So it was still through the school, but I didn't have a meal plan. So I had to buy groceries and all that. It was great to not have to pay rent on top of that, though. Yeah. Um, so it depends on. Like, if you're in my situation where you can't get a job off campus. I also had a friend who worked literally 80 hours a week to pay her rent. And I thought you were going to say 80 hours away. I was like, what? <laughs> How did she do that? Yeah. She worked literally 80 hours a week just to pay rent. And I said, that's ridiculous. She mm-hmm. said, yeah, but I'm not going to have debt. And I'm like, but you don't have a life. Yeah. <laughs> on top of classes? On top of classes. Uh, and she's like, it's great. And I'm like, when was the crazy. last time you slept in there? Yeah. Oh my gosh! So where did she work? Were you staying at her eighty hours? She had like two different jobs. Oh, okay. Oh wow! It's like was she a waitress Maybe or something? Three. Yeah, she she worked a bunch and she. But like we never saw her outside of class. Yeah. And then she became an RA because she was like, I can't afford this. I'm like, no, duh. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and that's the other thing, too, is that, like, I had to become an RA to be able to enjoy living on yeah. campus while also, it, like, not having to pay that much. Yeah. So that, that worked out really well. 